The Old Sea Dog by R. L. Stevenson. Square Trelawney, Dr. Livesay, and the rest of these gentlemen having asked me to write down the whole particulars about Treasure Island from the beginning to the end. I take up my pen to do their bidding. I go back to the time when my father kept the Admiral Benbow Inn and a brown old seaman with a sabre cut first took up his lodging under our roof. I remember him as if it were yesterday. As he came plodding to the inn door, his sea chest following behind him in a hand barrow, a tall, strong, heavy, nut-brown man, his starry pigtail falling over the shoulder of his soiled blue coat, his hands ragged and scarred with the black broken nails and a sabre cut across one cheek, a dirty livid white. I remember him looking round the cover and whistling to himself as he did so. Then he rapped on the door with a bit of stick that he carried and when my father appeared, called roughly for a glass of rum. Much company? This is a handy cope, said he at length. Much company, mate? My father told him no. Very little company. The more was a pity. Well then, said he, this is the berth for me. Stay here a bit, he continued. You might call me captain. He threw down three or four gold pieces on the threshold. You can tell me when I have worked through that, said he, looking as fierce as a commander. He was a very silent man by custom. All day he hung around the cove or upon the cliffs with a brass telescope. All evening he sat in the corner of the parlor next to the fire and drank rum and water. Mostly he would not speak when spoken to, only look up sudden and fierce and blow through his nose like a fog horn. And we the people who came about her house soon learned to let him be. Every day when he came back from his stroll, he would ask if any seafaring man had gone by along the road. At first he, he thought it was the want of company of his own kind that made him ask this question. But at last we began to see he was desirous to avoid them. He had taken me aside one day and promised me a silver four penny on the first of every month. If I would only keep my eye open for a seafaring man with one leg and let him know the moment he appeared. But though I was terrified by the idea of seafaring men with one leg, I was far less afraid of the captain himself than anybody else who knew him. His stories were what frightened people worst of all. Dreadful stories they were about hanging, walking the plank, and storms at sea. My father was always saying the inn would be ruined, for people would soon cease coming there to be tronized over and sent shivering to their beds. But I really believe his presence did us good. People were frightened at that time, but on looking back they rather liked it. It was a fine excitement in a quiet country life. And there was even a party of the one younger men who pretended to admire him, calling him a true sea dog and a real old salt, and such like names. In one way, indeed, he bet fair to ruin us, for he kept on staying week after week and at last month after month, so that all the money had been long exhausted and still my father never plucked up the heart to insist on having more. If ever he mentioned it, the captain blew through his nose so loudly that you might say he roared and stared my poor father out of the room. All the time he lived with us, the captain made no change of whatever in his dress but to say some stockings from a hawker. I remember the appearance of his coat, which he patched himself upstairs in his room and which before the end was nothing but patches. He never wrote or received a letter. 
and he never spoke with any but the neighbors and with this for the most part only when drunk on rum the great sea chest none of us had ever seen open he was only once crossed dr livesey came late one afternoon to see my father took a bit of dinner from my mother and went into the parlor to wait for his horse i followed him in and i remember observing the contrast the neat bright doctor with his powder as white as snow and his bright black eyes and pleasant manners made with that filthy heavy bleared scarecrow of a pirate of ours sitting far gone in rum with his arms on the table suddenly he the captain that is began to pipe up his eternal song whipped in when on the dead man's chest you who who and the bottle of rum thinking and the devil had done for the rest you who who and the bottle of rum but by this time we had all long ceased to pay any particular notice to the song it was new to nobody but dr life say and on him i observed it did not produce an agreeable effect for he looked up for a moment quite angrily before he went on with his talk to old taylor the gardener the captain gradually brightened up at his own music and at last flapped his hand upon the table before him in a way we all knew to mean silence the voices stopped at once but all but dr live says he went on as before speaking clear and kind the captain glared at him for a while flapped his hands again glared still harder and at last broke out with silence there between two decks were you addressing me sir says the doctor and when the ruffian had told him that this was so i have only one thing to say to you sir replies the doctor that if you keep on drinking the rum the world will soon be quite of of a very dirty scoundrel the old fellow's fury was awful he sprang to his feet drew and opened a sailor's clasp knife and threatened to pin the doctor to the wall the doctor never so much as moved he spoke to him as before in the same tone of a voice perfectly calm and steady if you do not put that knife this instant in your pocket I prom- I promise upon my honor you shall hang at the next assizes. Then followed a battle of looks between them. But the captain soon knuckled under, put under his weapon and resumed his seat, rumbling like a beaten dog. And now, sir, continued the doctor, since I now know there's such a fellow in my district, you may count I will have an eye upon you day and night. I'm not a doctor only. I'm a magistrate and if I catch a breath of complaint against you I will have you hunted down and routed out of this Soon after Dr Life says horse came to the door and he rode away but the captain held his peace that evening and for many evenings to come Thank you